There's a known issue with the Mother 32 when using external oscillators and getting them to track correctly with the synthesizer itself. Essentially the problem lies within a mismatch of impedances between outputs and inputs. And the V-Scale was designed to address this among other issues. There'll be a basic user guide describing essentially what the V-Scale does, but there'll also be a much more in-depth one explaining the issues on a technical level. In its simplest form, the V-Scale can function as a buffered multiple, but unlike some, it's got a high impedance input and a low impedance output. This makes it ideal for correcting tracking problems between instruments controlling external VCOs, or by passing control voltages further down the line to other modules, even when using additional passive multiples. VCOs themselves might have different impedances at their inputs, which can add further load to the CV signals coming from sequencers, keyboards and other synthesizers. And the V-Scale helps to keep the signal at an optimum strength so that no pitch variation occurs when using multiple VCOs on one input signal. At the moment you're listening to the sawtooth output of the Mother 32. And this is tuned to C2. Simultaneously I've also got this Minimod VCO going via the, the muting mixer into the external audio input of the Mother 32. So if I change this mix pot, you'll hear the, the sound of the, the Minimod VCO. And I've got the output of this VCO going into this tuner. So if I turn the mix up to about 50% of both, You can hear they're pretty close already, that's actually quite a musical difference, but if I want to get these really close, it might take a little bit of, you know, quite a few attempts maybe, but I'll see if I can get it a bit tighter than that. That's pretty close, yeah, that'll do. So if I change the the octave that this is outputting, it will also change the obviously the tuning of this VCO and you'll see the difference in the tightness of the tuning reflecting in the tuner. So if I go up one octave, You can see now that the output of that VCO is slightly detuned, it's gone out of tune, it's slightly flat. And you can hear it as well because you can hear the two waveforms beating against each other. If I go up a second octave to C4, you can hear that's much more significant. And the difference will double with every octave, so up another one. and then back to normal. So to fix this problem with the V-Scale, I'll take this one volt proctave signals coming from the keyboard out of the 32, put it into the input of the V-Scale, and then take a cable from the fixed output of the V-Scale, and go into the one volt proctave of the VCO. And I'll have to retune that a little bit. So that's pretty good. Now when I go up an octave, two octaves, you can see by the needle, it doesn't even look like it's moving. And you've got to make some allowances for there being some tuning difference between the two pots because it's just impossible to get them absolutely spot on.
So what's happening here is by the VCO being connected to that keyboard output, it's pulling down its output slightly, meaning it's affecting that one volt per octave output signal, so it's not quite reaching the voltages that it needs to, to produce accurate octaves. I can demonstrate this even further by loading more VCOs onto the CV signal coming from the keyboard output. Normally we wouldn't use a passive multiple for copying CV signals that are used to control pitch. But because the VSCO has an extremely low impedance output, it makes the use of passive multiples totally viable for, for this kind of usage. And the same is true of the CV output of the glider noise module. The issue here is that if we add a second VCO using a passive multiple, this will firstly double the load on the output of the Mother 32. And so, as a result, it will need to provide double the current. And then, because of the impedance mismatch, the drop in pitch CV will also be double, and so this will make the tracking error twice as bad. Right, so there's a mix of two VCOs, and I'm still at C2, and that's relatively well tuned. But look what happens when I add a second VCO by putting this multiplied 1 volt proctave signal into the next 1 volt proctave in input, the next VCO. As you can hear, that's affected the tuning. And when I just third, I set the tuning completely out. But if I use the V scale again, Take the output of the V scale into the, the multiple. Add the first VCO and adjust its tuning. Then add the second VCO. and add the third. This basically allows you to use a passive multiple to control multiple VCOs as part of your, your voice. So now if I play octaves. So that's the external VCO, mixed with the internal VCO. Do we tune in that again? Again, it's, it's, you never get it perfect, and that's not really the nature of the instruments, but just, for, just to illustrate the point. That's pretty close. Then adding in the second external VCO and the third. So that's four, four VCOs. And then change the octaves of them. It's worth noting that using a, a active or buffered multiple to fix this kind of tracking error might not necessarily work. The advantage of the V-scale is that it's got a very high input impedance and a very low output impedance, and it's specifically designed to fix pitch tracking problems. The AJH Minimod VCOs are very well calibrated at the time of assembly 
and despite their vintage design, they track incredibly well. So to show this behavior with another VCO, I've got this Dofa oscillator, which also has very good tracking. Just as before, I've got the, the mix of the two VCOs and I'll just retune it again so you can hear the difference. And you can see on the tuner the output of the Dofa VCO. So if I increase the octave, you can already hear that movement between the VCOs. You can hear they're out of tune, but you can also see it in the, on the tuner screen. And then we've got the further octave. The difference gets greater and it approximately doubles every time. same test as before but this time using the v-scale between the output of the mother 32 and the one volt per octave input of the dofa vco and you can see by that tuning needle the dofa vco is staying in tune And even though the two VCOs aren't perfectly tuned to each other because it's, it's very difficult to do so, but certainly that is well within the range of what is musically acceptable if not desirable. <laughs> 